Welcome back to Nanome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about ketamine. This was actually a recommendation from one of my subscribers on YouTube. So if you have ideas, I like to take ideas from subscribers and turn them into videos. So here we are talking about ketamine. So the reason I have two structures up is actually because when ketamine is synthesized, it's actually made as two enantiomers, an R and an S enantiomer. The S enantiomer is in magenta, and the R enantiomer is in yellow. There is in one of these compounds is actually an approved medication. It's a nasal spray, and that would be the S-ketamine enantiomer in magenta. And although S-ketamine is the one approved for uh, treatment-resistant depression, it's actually been found that R-ketamine is actually a candidate that's probably going to be made into a medication because it actually has better antidepressant effects out of the two enantiomers of ketamine. So let's talk about ketamine. So these are the structures of both of the enantiomers. I'm going to take the S enantiomer and I'm going to superimpose it onto the R enantiomer so we can in fact see that these are enantiomers. Uh, now that we have these two enantiomers superimposed on one another, notice how in magenta, the amine is pointing up and the cyclohexane ring in magenta is pointing down, whereas in the enantiomer in yellow, we have the opposite configuration where the amine is pointing down and the cyclohexane ring is pointed up to in fact see if these compounds are enantiomers of one another. Another compound of this class is a compound you guys probably have heard of called PCP, which is the compound in this light blue. And to see how PCP and S-ketamine are different, let's superimpose them on top of one another. Okay, I'm going to take S-ketamine, superimpose it on top of PCP. Okay, and when we do that, here's what we see in terms of similarities and differences between um, S-ketamine and PCP. So S-ketamine in magenta has this coral group coming off of it, whereas PCP just has a hydrogen, as we can see. So now let's look at the top part of the ring, and here's the major difference. The major difference is that they both have cyclohexane rings, but they're sitting in different three-dimensional conformations. Um, and the other difference is that S-ketamine has this carbonyl group right here, okay? that um, PCP does not have. In the back of the compound, what we can see is that with uh, S-ketamine, we just have this CH3 coming off the nitrogen, whereas in PCP, we have this uh, cyclohexane ring with the nitrogen inside of the ring. So this is the molecular target for ketamine and PCP. This is called the NMDA receptor. And the receptor actually works a little bit differently than G-protein coupled receptors that I talk about in a lot of my videos. And the major difference is that the binding of a ligand in this site over here and this site over here causes the uh, receptor to open and ions flow through the pore that opens inside of the receptor. And this is how the receptor is activated. It's called an ion channel receptor. Specifically, um, in a normal condition for this receptor to work, both glutamate and glycine. So one would bind to this site on the receptor. The other one would bind over here on the receptor. So notice that both those amino acids have to bind to the receptor in order for this to, um, for the pore to open and ions to flow through, being called an ion channel receptor. What's interesting about um, PCP and ketamine is that these compounds don't bind to the site um, in this area that we talked about. The interesting thing about PCP and ketamine is that they don't bind to the same site as glutamate and glycine. They bind to an allosteric site of the receptor right in this position over here with the amino acids highlighted. Um, and because they don't bind to the place where the endogenous ligands to this receptor bind, they bind to an allosteric site. And this allosteric site actually acts as an allosteric antagonist, meaning that when ketamine or PCP binds, it actually forces the receptor closed so that ions flow through 
much less than they would with glutamate or glycine. So it's an antagonist of the receptor, but it's an allosteric antagonist because the compounds are binding to an allosteric site on the receptor and forcing it shut so that ions can't flow through. Let's first talk about um, how S-ketamine binds to the receptor. We can now see S-ketamine in this magenta color. <clears throat> And we can see it has a glide score of negative 6.25 kcals per mole. And that's the orientation in which S-ketamine sits inside the receptor. And then if we overlay that with how R-ketamine sits inside the receptor. So here we have S-ketamine and R-ketamine uh, overlaid on top of each other inside the receptor. With the S-ketamine being in magenta and the R-ketamine being in yellow. And what we can see is that the coros are sitting in opposite conformations of each other because they're enantiomers, as well as the actually the carbonyl groups right here on S-ketamine and right here on R-ketamine. And what's interesting is that the amines line up with each other inside the receptor site. If we take both those out and we put PCP inside the receptor, we can actually see how PCP sits inside the receptor. And this actually has a much better glide score than both S and R ketamine. Let's overlay S ketamine to see how what the similarities in terms of the binding site are. The major similarity is what we see when um, S ketamine and PCP bind to the receptor is that the ring over here lines up and the ring over here lines up with each other. And I think that's quite interesting showing how these compounds are basically conserved um, inside the binding site. And we can see that, you know, the um, PCP has a much better glide score than S-ketamine. So overall, I think it's, um, I think obviously we always need to do more research. Um, although S-ketamine is an approved medication as a nasal spray for depression, it's actually been shown in publications that R-ketamine has more potent long-lasting effects as an antidepressant than S-ketamine. Um, and, you know, the major reason, well, the one of the reasons I've read that S-ketamine is approved over R-ketamine, which was developed by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, is that it actually shows um, better affinity towards the receptor. So that's one of the reasons I suppose they made that nasal spray as R as S-ketamine instead of um, R-ketamine. So I'm really curious to see what research comes out of this because I'm really curious to see how, you know, R-ketamine can also be a, a potent therapeutic um, antidepressant. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Till next time, stay curious. Um, I like when subscribers comment with specific videos they want to see because this video was, of course, um, inspired by that. So till next time, stay curious.